Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. I'm sure I am not. So in today's video, as you might have seen in the video title, we are going to take a look at a very, very exciting board. This board is also from Raxa. We have seen many other products in this channel from Raxa. And this is called actually Raxa X4. It comes with an Intel. So it's an Intel N100 processor, which is four core, four threads, 3.4 gigahertz turbo speed, six watt TDP, and the maximum RAM it supports is 16 gigabyte. I bought the 8 gigabyte version from Raxa, but it can go up to 16. It also comes with Intel UHD integrated graphics, which supports DirectX 12.1 and OpenCL3. And the clock speed of Intel UHD integrated graphics is 750 megahertz. And also on top of all of this, they added an RPi 2040 on the board. And the RAM is LPDDR5, I forgot to mention that, which is 48 800 mega transfer per second mt slash s and it comes with a 2.5 gigabit ethernet which is awesome and it supports poe so you can support the whole board with a single ethernet cable basically which we are going to test so let me grab it here you go i bought everything i bought the raxa 25 watt poe hat for x4 i bought the raxa x4 8 gigabyte with wi-fi 6 and i bought the heatsink which is a massive and heavy for x4 okay so this bad boy is 80 dollars keep that in mind and this is the heatsink which is 15 dollars price for the 25 watt x4 20 dollars so this is 20 dollars this is 80 dollars and this is $15, okay? So the PoE is optional. Basically, I'm gonna combine these two and I'm gonna say whatever performance we are gonna see is almost identical to the price you're gonna pay for a Raspberry Pi with an eight gigabyte RAM and NVMe SSD hat. Maybe this is even more expensive. So that being said, let's take things out. Wow, that is really impressive. They put an X an Intel N100 on this. It's exactly, I think it's gonna be turn out to be same size okay let's do it one by one okay so on the box that's exactly what i was explaining intel n100 uhd graphics lpddr5 on board wi-fi 5 or 6 this is with wi-fi 6 m.2 m key which is connector for 2230 nvme ssd and i know that i checked it beforehand the m.2 m key connector supports pcie 3 with four lane speed so x4 okay dual micro hdmi up to 4k 60 fps and usb 3 and also i checked that so usb 3s are usb 3 point two and they are 10 gigabit speeds okay so i know you are all excited and waiting for me to open this up there you go that's beautiful somebody's fingerprint is on there but it's not mine but it's okay so that's the intel n100 that comes with the wi-fi 6 i'm gonna flip this around this way and this one this way comes with an rtc battery which is amazing and that m.2 key goes here the ssd goes here which i'm gonna install something so usb c port uh, over here here micro hdmi's audio over here three usb 3.2 and one usb 2 and a 2.5 gigabit ethernet the 40 pin classic raxa with same color coding and everything gpio and over here is the n100 it is much lighter than a regular raspberry pi i'm gonna say so this is super impressive i always love to have a board like this with a not intel necessarily but like x64 x86 cpu so we have it seems like and uh, in terms of the heatsink, I mean, it's massive, it's heavy. Wow, okay, how does this work? I guess that way. Okay, how does this work? Is it like this? I have no clue, I have to figure that out. I just know that this goes on here and you screw that in there. Okay, that I know, is it like that? Yeah, so not really documentation needed. I just traced the screw holes. So it's gonna be something like this. And the cable is over here, okay? So I need a thermal paste to put it on here or here. Oh wait, sorry, I don't need anything. It seems like they included everything. That's 3M. That's the thermal pad, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put that over here. In terms of screws, they all look alike. So let me grab a line of screw. Let me try. Okay, that looks like it. But it's short though. Is there two different sizes? Yeah, okay. So let's take the big ones. Try that one. 
nope i don't think so okay do i need to read documentation i don't want to okay that's the way okay i know you guys were laughing at me probably so i just don't want to read the documentation let me try okay so we can do it that way but let me first install on the cpu let me do it this way okay oh almost forgot Ah, uh, I see. First you put the standoffs, I assume, and then these go in like that. Yeah, all right, so let me put this in. Okay, we successfully installed it without reading documentation. Mission accomplished. Okay. I think I assembled it and this is the PoE hat I guess not sure it would fit in combination with the fan but we'll see okay so I guess something like that that's definitely not ideal but seems like I can work with it I don't think they are compatible so it is one or the other okay so i installed the hat and obviously it's not locked down but it is okay safe enough and i installed the heatsink connected the connections for the fan powering the fan this is the antenna put the feet whatever rubber feet in there everything seems to be in order you just put it like that so size wise as you can see the length and the width is identical the board itself as you can see it's the same size as raspberry pi 5 but with the case and the shell and the heatsink and everything yeah obviously is gonna be bigger so yeah i guess that's it for now this is i got it so what i'm gonna do is i am going to bring out the cables clean up here the mess i have to find a 2230 nvme ssd i think i have some laying around but mostly i have these like 2242 2230 i'm not sure if i have if not i have to order it anyway give me a couple of minutes let me set the rest and i will be right back if few moments later okay so everything is put together and i borrowed the ssd from kada's mind uh, video so i found just the only that one as a 20 to 30. so anyway you see there is no power cable this is mouse and keyboard that's hdmi all right i'm gonna connect it with poe okay something is happening it's happening i see something oh all right okay first try everything is working so far which is nothing just a bias so alder lake ulx in Intel 800, 800 megahertz, and then 4800 megahertz the RAM and 8 gigabyte RAM. All good. CPU configuration. Virtualization is enabled. AVX, all that good stuff. AES and all that. CPU SMM enhancements, all enabled. Power performance stuff. You guys love these things. The turbo mode and the C states and stuff like that. P state also here. Okay, not gonna touch anything. GT power control stuff over here. ACPI settings over here. Acoustic management, USB, all right. Network, CSM disabled, NVMe. It detected my Western Digital 2 terabyte NVMe SSD. SDIO, TL auth, Intel, Ethernet, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet plus PoE, perfect. And uh, driver health, 2.5, 2.5, doesn't matter. Boot and save and exit. All right, everything seems to be in order. Let me grab a Windows 11 uh, USB. All right, here we go. I have a Windows 11 USB. Uh, I am going to stick it in there. All right, uh, I guess we have to one reboot. Okay, go back to BIOS. Hopefully now we'll see that USB device. Boot here, yep. Boot override, USB device. There you go. Let's see, fingers crossed, Windows 11, let's go. Oh, I see Windows logo. <laughs> I love it when things just work out of box. Okay, let's not get too excited, but it is working. Let's get into fast forward mode. Let me install Windows 11. There we go. Okay, so all checks passed, meaning TPM and CPU requirement, all that stuff. I put a stock Windows 11 USB. It's not special, nothing modified. Okay, so I'm going to install Windows 11, boot into it and install a bunch of benchmark tools and I will be right back. <laughs> 
Okay, so we are back. So I got everything working. I got the Ethernet driver installed, which is 2.5 gig Intel. I just downloaded an Intel Ethernet driver bundle. Everything worked. I installed all Windows updates. I tried Steam's 3D Mark. 3D Mark can't run any benchmark on this CPU. I tried Cinebench. This is what I'm getting. I had the same experience when I tried to do Cinebench and other benchmarks in the other computer that I had in with the N100 CPU. So anyway, that is not working. But other than that, if we go here, and if I want to show you the 4K video playback, it drops frames a little bit initially, but then it starts playing smoothly with no problems. So it is working. Windows 11 is working. It is snappy. It can be used definitely as a, you know, browsing, web surfing, emailing, working, stuff like that. Very low power consumption, very quiet, a little bit hot here. Not that much, really. Honestly, it's just warm. I'm going to say it's a surface that's warm and that's it. Then it plays at 4K video with absolutely no problem with just a little bit stutters here and there I mean drops frames and so on but overall it seems fast and it seems acceptable yeah I just the only thing is as I said I couldn't get it but it doesn't matter we are gonna boot into an Ubuntu and continue there right before I go I just forgot that I didn't run the crystal disk benchmark that we can do I guess so let's run this and uh, I will prepare an Ubuntu Okay, as you can see, that's a very acceptable, very good speeds for PCIe 3x4. Okay, so we benchmarked the SSD as well, and that's what we got. Now it's time for Ubuntu. Okay, so I am going to put this in there and uh, there is nothing else really to show you here in Windows. Let me see. I think most drivers well, I was able to install. The Wi-Fi card is not installed and some unknown device. I don't want to install it here. But as you can see, it's very snappy. You can absolutely use this as a daily driver computer. Windows machine, a very portable, very lightweight, low power, very quiet, and it's very powerful. So it's good enough for daily stuff. Okay, now let's reboot and uh, I want to boot into Ubuntu and uh, do some bunch of stuff over there like uh, benchmark and other tests and just to see if Ubuntu works so let's override the boot there we go Okay, so we are back. As you can see, Intel N100 at 3.4 gigahertz, and the GPU is Intel UHD, basically. So, seems like everything is working. And by the way, in Linux, it feels so much snappier than Windows. Obviously, it's lighter, but it is so fast. It's really fast. Definitely, I can see myself using this as a, like a daily machine for work stuff. So, if we wanna do an iPerf 3, just to make sure it is at 2.5, gigabit ethernet exactly let's see and it is so 2.5 gigabit and let's try the stress engine and suspension so let's see i guess and proc okay four cores all right so suspension threads equals four cpu run okay 11,000 that's uh, higher than raspberry pi 5 which is 10,000 and then if we do stress ng which is a better test Okay, so we got the score of 17,000, okay? 900 is what you will get with a Raspberry Pi 5. Obviously, much, much faster. Same price, that's ARM, this is Intel, and it is much, much faster. And more OS, I'm gonna say, you know, out of box will work on this, like Windows and Linux. And uh, yeah, seems like it's doing great. Everything is working. If we do, let me see what I have here. So that's my USB. Let me do uh, HD Palm on the NVMe over here as well. Okay, so it is uh, exactly similar numbers that we were getting in Windows. And uh, I didn't try. Let me see if it is any different in here. I didn't install any drivers or anything. I just want to see if we can play a 4K with no stutters here. Okay. Okay. Yep. It's not dropping any frames. It's playing very well. No frames. Barely some frames here and there. Not much. But yeah, just like Windows, it's playing a 60 FPS 4K video perfectly. Yeah, you can absolutely use this machine for development 
content for work, daily web surfing, sending emails and coding. Definitely you can do that. It's a very snappy machine and very quiet again. And as I said, just a single, can remove this, just a single USB Ethernet. And this is HDMI and that's the mouse and keyboard. That's all. So that is a piece of impressive hardware. And uh, I have nothing negative to say about it. The only thing that's remaining that needs to be a little bit better documented that I can't really find it is like GPIO stuff. I didn't actually check here. Well, yeah, there is a HF512. The sys class is not there. Okay, so that part is not really documented. I have some stuff documented in there in some PDF in here in the GPIO in this PDF for Raxa product brief, but these numbers are not actually sys class GPIO numbers. So these are not going to work in there and I couldn't find anything else really. So let me take a one last look at everything and otherwise I will come back and tell you that I couldn't get the GPIO working. So I will be right back. All right, I got everything to work. And now let me tell you what I'm talking about. So we are going to use the USB-C power, okay? Not the PoE header, not the PoE hat, which is right here, okay? We're not gonna use that. And let me show you what I got to work. So the power consumption, by the way, I was able to install Ubuntu and Windows alongside each other on this tiny NVMe SSD and both are working perfectly. Now let's go into Ubuntu. Okay, I want to show you remember that I was telling you that it comes with an RPI 2040 Which is right here and there. Okay, we never touched on it and I was searching for GPIO I was trying to do something with the GPIO what I figured out was, you know In order to do that you need to access it through RPI 2040 So it is not accessible through the OS itself the N100 like this Ubuntu cannot access the GPIO The RPI R2040 can access the GPIO doesn't matter. Let me show you what what I did so let's go into Pico I just cloned Pico examples and Pico SDK there are so many blog posts out there that explains how to do you know Pico RPI 2040 development you just need the SDK and some examples that's all you need so if we go to Pico examples there is a blink dot c right i created a build folder and there i built the examples so what i'm going to show you is the changes i made let me show you what i found okay so as you can see i placed the ground wire on the ground in the fifth one which is as you can see in here in the, the raxos documentation right there one two three four five the fifth one is right there is the ground okay and i skipped one pin and i put it in here the next one which is gp6 so the red is on gp6 so that's the GPIO pin 6. Keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to go back to folders, go to blank, and then blank.c, okay? Here's what I did. The changes I made. I changed the delay to to be 3000, and I added this line, uint LED pin 5, which is now 6, okay? And as you can see, by the way, there's nothing on the GPIO, right? This is zero right now, okay? Now, what I did was actually, I also changed the code, LED pin, and I put it in here, in here, and in here. Here. GPIO in it, GPIO set direction, GPIO put the value, right? One zero, one zero based on that delay. That's in right here. Okay, that's all I did. A couple lines changed that changed from the sample. Now I'm gonna make it. We built it. Now, if I open this very folder that I'm in, you're gonna see that I get a UF2 file. Okay, that written in C. Now there is a button right there. If I hold it, one, two, three, and let go, look what happens. There we go. RPI is mounted as a disk. Now I copy this UF2 file, I go to RPI, I paste it, and watch what happens. There you go. 3.3 volts, okay? Now, 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 3. You see that? So 3 delay, 3 seconds, it turns off, turns on, turns off right there you go so it's blinking so yes thumbs up for raxa everything is actually very well documented and i'm happy i was able to very easily install ubuntu install windows alongside each other and get access to rpi 2040 and even get access to gpio everything is working so by far personally this board is my favorite and easily it comes with intel it can boot from this tiny ssd and it can boot into ubuntu or windows 
those. Both are very snappy and easy to use and works perfectly, can be used as daily OS, you know, doing your work. Plus there is an RPI 2040, plus I get access to GPIO and everything is working. So this $80, keep in mind, that's $80 board. By far, my personal favorite is this SPC. You might have a different opinion, but please let me know what you think down below. I love this board. I'm happy that I was able to get everything to work. So thanks for watching. Put down all your questions, ideas, whatever you want to tell me down below. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.